In this video, I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about why we decided to convert this aerated static pile on the left with the temperature probe in it into uh, anaerobic Jerry Gillespie or SPICE static pile inoculated compost extension pile, which is basically anaerobic. Um, like I had commented before, you know, if you're doing an actively turned compost pile, it has to reach 131F for 15 days. And if you're doing a static, aerated static pile like these two are set up to be, it's three days for at 131 degrees in order to kill pathogens and parasites and weed seeds and so on. You definitely want to stay under 160 though because get above that and you kill beneficial microbes. So as I think about these aerated static piles and that temp temperature requirement, you know, I guess it makes sense if you're covering your aerated static piles. So, and that is recommended, and we did cover the one that we decided to completely blow to finish with wood chips. Um, although, like I've commented before, if you're doing this in scale, you should just go ahead and use some of your finished compost for a cover. And if you're doing a cover, then yes, I could see how three days at 131, because everything underneath the cover, because the cover actually acts as insulation, not to mention the fact that it also captures noxious gases and helps to get them processed by the, the microbes in the, in the compost will also process those noxious gases, but it acts as an insulation. And so yeah, in that case, then I can see how if you're doing your cover properly and you got a thick enough cover that the whole pile is gonna reach 131 F and so three days is enough. If not, then of course the material near the surface, top six inches or so, isn't gonna reach those higher temperatures and you're gonna end up with a pathogen problem. And if you're doing this in scale and, and you know have testing requirements, you may or may not meet those testing requirements for pathogens and so on. You know, in Wisconsin, uh, near the Great Lakes where we are, you know, we can have cloudy days for weeks on end with lots of rain. And um, that can be an issue. You know, this pile here, I'm going to just comment about the temperature. So you definitely have to have a temperature probe, and you need to be probing your piles when you're doing um, an aerated, whether it's a static or actively turned pile. And as I've commented before, if it starts to get too hot, you better have a turner that has a watering system on it that you can put some water on it to cool down, or other, otherwise you gotta try and add in material. If you turn the pile when it's too hot, um, you're just gonna make it hotter because those microbes, the bacteria need oxygen to th thrive and turning the pile is gonna add more, even more oxygen, so the pile is gonna get even hotter. And um, yeah, Elaine Ingham has talked about some composting operations that she's gone to that are just completely done wrong. And she's sort of afraid to even get near the piles, <laughs> being afraid that they're gonna spontaneously combust. So um, anyway, getting back to our issue in Wisconsin and why we decided to go with a a spice pile or a Jerry Gillespie method pile was because of all the wet weather, wet, damp, sunny, no sun days. And, uh, you know, with the Jerry Gillespie method, you actually make up a mix of anaerobic um, microbes, so microbes that thrive in an oxygen deprived environment. And so, you know, you can look at this up and this is just a couple of the steps that I just wanted to show you that, you know, you start out with rice water and you let that ferment and then you add in milk and you let that ferment and you take the cheese off the top and then later on, you know, you add in salt dust and salt water and molasses and so on. And you make this product called lacto and 
once you've got that, then uh, you use that and you put it in an even larger, or excuse me, when you use the uh, ferment the rice and you do the milk, that makes a product called lactose, and then you add in these other materials into a larger drum. It also includes a bag, a mesh bag with some fresh cut greens and so on. Anyway, it's a process, and you make up your batch of anaerobic microbes, and um, you apply that to your material and, and then cover the material for four to six weeks, and at that point, you check it and make sure it's not too dry. Again, you know, it's 60 to 70 percent moisture content. You need to, of course, make sure that um, when you start out, you've got that, and then in four to six weeks, you check again and make sure it's fine. Um, it, if needed, you know, you can turn your pile and add moisture, and probably wouldn't hurt to inoculate it again some more with the spice inoculant. And you know, again, why that was interesting to us is because here's a pile where we don't have the hours, the diesel fuel, the machinery costs, and so on to actively turn it. It's a static pile, so if we've got the right materials in there, hopefully it'll, it can be highly fungal. Um, and it's covered and anaerobic, so if we get a lot of wet, cold, dreary days, um, it'll be, should be just fine. So what we did was after we had blown this pile here that you can see is heating nicely um, for about a week or so, we decided to try and turn it into a Jerry Gillespie pile. And so we applied, made up some of his inoculant, spice inoculant. We just applied a ton of it to the t top of it surface, you know, just dumping gallons of it basically um, because it's relatively cheap to make and why not onto the surface thinking that that would be enough because of course this pile had been turned and it's at the wood chips and thinking that that material would get the inoculant would get in there but it, it didn't in fact when you when I reread re his directions you know he does say that you need to get that inoculant throughout the depth of the pile so you'll see what the results look like later on in, in a later video. Um, but this is still an interesting approach. It just didn't work out great for us. Um, we we kind of jumped in at the last second, didn't do, maybe do enough research, and uh, you know, as they say, the devil's in the details.